Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to be looking at the timeline viewport and basic keyframing. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful. You can also follow me on Twitter at Johnny Gizmo. Keyframing is at the heart of animation. Making adjustments to your objects, materials, lights, etc. at given points in time and being able to move between them either sharply, smoothly, or arbitrarily is the key to bringing your 3D to life. In this video, we'll look at the simplest way to work with your keyframes and several ways to get started in keyframing. In later videos, we'll see how we can work with those keyframes in more advanced ways in the dope sheet, the graph editor, and the driver editor. So in a default Blender scene, you're presented with a 3D viewport, an outliner, properties window, and a timeline. Let's expand the timeline to take a closer look. The timeline is presented left to right with the frames marked at the top. There are a couple of menus at the top left. The playback popover menu is a set of options to control how the playback handles audio, what editors your animation will play in, and lets you set the start and end frame for your shot. Next is the keying popover menu. We'll check this one out in just a minute. The view menu gives you a couple of options, include jumping to the current frame or framing all, which is really just a way to reset the view of your timeline to see your whole animation. The marker menu allows you to add markers to your timeline. Putting your playhead on a frame and choosing add marker will drop a marker on your scene. So if I put my playhead on frame 70, add a marker, you'll see F underscore 70 is added at the bottom here. If I click off of this marker, you'll see that it dims out just a little bit. And so you can tell a marker is selected if it's bright white. You can click and drag on a marker to move it around. You can use the marker menu to rename your marker. Another nice feature of markers is a way to bind cameras. This allows you to animate changing between two cameras. For instance, if I add a second camera to this scene, and move my playhead back to frame one, I can say marker, bind camera to markers. You'll see at the bottom, camera.001 now has a marker at frame one. If I go to frame 90 and choose my second camera, and say marker bind cameras to marker, you'll see that camera now has a marker. If I go into camera view and play my animation, when the animation reaches the camera marker, it switches to the other camera. The record button is for auto keying, and we're gonna come back to that in just a minute. Next are your transport controls. Jump to start and jump to end are the outermost. The next most inner ones are previous keyframe and next keyframe and then in the middle are play in reverse and play forward. Moving to the right, we have the current frame number. We can see what its current value is or we can change it from here. Finally on this top bar, we have start and end. These two options have two purposes. The first purpose is when this stopwatch icon is not lit up. This will set the beginning and ending render frames of our scene. So right now, our scene will start rendering frame one and end with frame 250. I can change those from here. You'll see that the timeline darkens out to match the frames that I've selected. If I were to render an animation right now, it would render from frame 50 to frame 250. Now, if there's a small section of my animation that I wanna work on, say between frame 80 and frame 120, I could go ahead and set my start frame to 80 and my end frame to 120 but then I would need to reset it back to 50 and 250 when I was done. So instead, we can go ahead and click on this stopwatch icon, which is the use preview range. From here, I can set my smaller range of 80 to 120. Now if I play my animation, it will just play between these two frames. But if I were to render right now, I would still render 50 to 250. So now that we have a basic understanding of this window, let's add some keyframes. Most data points in Blender can be keyframed. The easiest way is in the 3D viewport. With an object selected, press the I key. This will bring up the insert keyframe menu. In this menu, there's a selection of keying sets. These are groups of keyframes you can insert all at once. 
These ones are for the general transform of our object, which mean its location, its rotation, and its scale. I'm just going to choose location for now. When you do this, you'll see several things happen. The frame information in the 3D viewport turns yellow. The location information in the properties window also turns yellow, and the dots next to their inputs become diamonds. And finally, a diamond was added to the timeline. The yellow frame number means we are on a frame that contains a keyframe for the active selected object. If we press our right arrow button to advance the frame, we'll see that the frame number goes back to white. And then the value in the properties viewport have turned to green. This means that while this is not a keyframe, the data in the window agrees with the previous keyframe. If we move this object in this non-keyframed frame, you'll see that these inputs turn orange. This means the object is now out of sync with its keyframes. And so if I were to change the frame now, this object won't retain this location, but instead will jump back to its keyframed position. Let's go ahead and move a bunch of frames forward, say to 80. Now I'm going to go ahead and move my object. You'll see that the location turns orange. Instead of having it snap back, I'm going to go ahead and press I to insert a new location keyframe. You'll see now it turns back to yellow. If I scrub through frame 50 to frame 80, my object now moves between those keyframes. When I land on a frame with a keyframe, my values turn yellow. And when I'm being controlled by a keyframe, I'm green. And then it will continue because this keyframe will continue on controlling through the end of this animation. There are other ways to keyframe. In the property windows, you'll see a dot next to any value that you can keyframe. For instance, if I go down to my materials, I see that the base color is keyframable. So if I click this dot, now on frame one, I have a keyframe for the base color. I'm gonna go ahead and move to frame 100, I'm going to change my color to red. I'm going to click this diamond, which sets a new keyframe in that frame. So what you'll notice is, now if I move with my arrow keys, on frames where there is no keyframe, the diamond will be an outline. On keys where there is a keyframe, the diamond will be solid. Now if I go to material preview mode, and I scrub through this animation, you'll see that as I scrub through, my object goes from white to red. If I've made a keyframe in error, I can right click on a value and say delete keyframe. This will remove the keyframe on that one frame. I'm gonna undo that. And let's say I've decided that I don't want any keyframes on the base color at all. I could right click on this and say clear keyframes. This will remove all keyframes on that channel. Now in the timeline, I can select a single keyframe and move it if I want. This will mean that the color change will take longer. I can select multiple and move them all at the same time. The G key in the timeline works the same way it does in the 3D viewport. It will grab the items that are selected and let you move them. Similarly, I can use the S key to scale keyframes. In addition, if you'd like your keyframes to have special meaning, you can use the R key to set the keyframe type. The keyframe type is simply a different way of displaying the keyframe diamond in the timeline. It doesn't actually change anything about the keyframe. I can also delete keyframes from the timeline by selecting the keyframe I want to delete and hitting X or the delete key. Now pressing I every time and choosing the keying set you want can be a hassle. That's where the keying set menu comes in. By choosing an active keying set here, every time you press I in the 3D viewport, only the selected set of keyframes will be used rather than popping up the menu. If you want to go back to choosing every time, just hit the X in this menu. So for instance, if I always only want to include location, I can choose the location active keying set, and then here I can move this where I want it and hit I. You'll notice no menu popped up, but a keyframe was added. The record button puts you in auto keying mode. This means 
So whatever you do to your object will be auto keyed. By default, this will auto key all of the transform properties of your object, location, rotation, and scale. So if I'm on frame 70 and I move my object, automatically a keyframe was created. Say I go to frame 90, move it, rotate it, and scale it, all of those will be added. If you prefer auto keying to only key the active keying set, you can also select that in the popover menu. This way, your only your active keying set will be auto keyed. So even though I changed the rotation and scale, only the location was keyframed. Changes to properties outside of the transform or the current keying set are not automatically tracked with auto keying mode. However, once you've set a keyframe on a channel, like we did with color, new changes to that channel will be tracked in auto key mode. So for instance, if I move back to frame 50 and set my metallic to one, and then move to frame 120 and set my metallic to zero, you'll see that nothing was keyed. This is still a dot next to metallic. However, if I come back to frame 50, I set the metallic to one and hit keyframe, move to 120 and change my metallic to one. You'll see that now, because I have a keyframe on the metallic channel, metallic is auto keying. Make sure to pay attention to when auto keying is on or off. I've messed up my animations before because I forgot it was on, moved stuff around that I didn't mean to, and all of a sudden those changes got keyed. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to animation tools in Blender. In upcoming videos, we'll cover more ways to work with our keyframed data. So as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a like, and if you enjoy my videos, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.